Welcome golf fans, pursuers of knowledge and the almighty dollar. This is your golf guru bringing you my before the lock show for the 2021, should have been 20, Olympics for men's golf. And uh, going to go over ownership projections as requested by the community. I asked and uh, I will deliver. I know there's not a ton of guys out there. I don't think there's going to be any shocks on the ownership, but there might be some things that you see that might change your mind or build some lineups with less ownership. So I'm going to go over that. I'm going to cover weather. I'm going to cover some updates that I think is important. I'm also going to show uh, some modeling on the uh, fairways hit because that's going to be important for here. And with all that said, thank you for stopping by. Give me about 10 minutes. I'm going to help you differentiate and get some solid lineups in from a DFS side and if anything from a betting side that you, know, you might see here might change some thoughts. Okay. With that said, of course, uh, Patrick Reed as we speak, should be on the grounds by now. I think they said 2 o'clock uh, Japan time. I'm not even sure what that is. Um, but that's about 14 hours ahead of Eastern, I believe. And, uh, you know, with that said, I mean, I was already a little bit off on Patrick Reed due to uh, just recent form of his game. It hasn't just been there where I like it. Uh, you know, a lot of 30ths at, you know, courses that are really easy against the easy fields. So kind of was out on him anyways, but without him actually getting to do a practice round, getting kind of settled uh, in with his time zones and all that. I mean, you know, he might be uh, good to go Thursday as in sleep on the plane, adrenaline, you know, kind of kicks in. But at some point, it's going to affect him uh, as he's trying to get, you know, used to the uh, the change in sleep patterns or whatnot. Not saying, I mean, the guy has traveled all over the place. He's played a lot of European events, of course, um, actually carrying his card over there. So, you know, who knows? But like I said, just on pure recent form, I'm out on head. And the last couple updates I'll cover. I've been watching the Golf Channel um, extensively, and I got to hear a lot about the pressers. And a lot of how the course is going to play, I was, you know, shockingly pretty dead on. Uh, even referencing uh, some of the guys referenced, uh, even uh, uh, Bones McKay, the caddy, I believe that was uh, for Phil for a while, um, was stating that, you know, it reminds him of Quail Hollow. Uh, also a little bit like Firestone, which, you know, we don't really have any uh, up-to-date data on that. Um, and then the guys were just saying that the rough is brutal. The green or the greens and the fairways, the course is immaculate. Um, they haven't had a round there played since May. And so if you keep it in the fairway, you're going to be able to score here. And if you're in the rough a lot, especially with the rain coming, uh, it's going to be very difficult. And so even around the greens, they were stating quite the you know, high rough around the greens, deep sand bunkers. So, again, you keep it in play. I don't think distance is going to come into so much concern. Now, of course, with the course being wetter, you are not going to get the ball to travel. So, it, you know, it is kind of the best world if you could be accurate and long, as always. Uh, but with that said, I'm going to show you some modeling of guys that have been hitting fairways uh, over the last 12 rounds. So you have that. And then last, just kind of a side note, uh, I don't know if you heard that John Rahm actually had two negative tests after his positive test, which such a bummer. That guy was so psyched to go play in this. And then, um, you know, again, got kind of hosed by the whole uh, testing. And then, funny enough, I guess even Stuart Sink mentioned that he got um, mailed a, a negative test, that, he, you know, he had a negative test, and he's like, I, I haven't taken a test forever. So I think some concerns are going on with the testing side. I guess they're actually going to be switching the test they use. I guess they have a better one. So, again, uh, that stinks. And probably Bryson, you know, who knows, could have also got a, a, a false positive or whatever. So, okay, that's enough said on updates. Let's go jump into ownership projections weather, uh, some modeling, and then we'll get you guys out of here. Okay, so I'm going to jump over to Fantasy National. I've already got this pulled up for you guys, and this is still the same exact model that I was using, and nothing's changed uh, from a large model perspective. But what I did is I went and clicked on Fairways Gain. This is over the last 12 rounds, and I've got no filters on it. One thing I'm going to do just for fun is we'll also look at how these guys did at Quail Hollow uh, against my model because, you know, it does seem like that's a really good comparable course. And with that said, funny enough, I wouldn't have guessed this, but Siwoo Kim um, is actually leading with fairways hits. So that's kind of interesting. Um, and I know he's good tee to green, but just and this is pulling. And I'm going to show you some of this so you guys know what data this is coming from. That's including the Rocket Mortgage, the Travelers, the U.S. Open, and the Memorial. Um, you know, you can see all green on fairways gain. And that's all that I'm really just looking at from this perspective. Uh, Colin Morikawa, that is no shock. Corey Connors makes total sense. This Ashan Wu, the problem here is um, this is pulling from like 2019. And I, I wanted to show you guys that just so you knew that, you know, from older data, uh, he does typically hit the fairways. You got Thomas Peters who came in fourth in 2016 here. That's pretty interesting. 
this uh, Fabrizino Zanotti. I think he's representing Italian Italy. I think he also got to carry the flag in for them. Uh, I, I'm going to pull his too. I'm guessing that's going to be older data. Well, we got Corrales, so that's not too far ago. And then you got some older data. Um, but you can see at Corrales hit uh, quite a bit of fairways. And it was pretty windy there, uh, if I remember correctly. And let's see here. You got Mito Piera. That should be pretty recent data. Like I guess I'm just going to click on a few of these for you guys. Yeah, that's that's all recent. So that's a good one to, to leverage. So, again, you're going to want guys. I know, you know, all around we want them to do everything. But um, it sounds like everybody that was stating that how brutal this rough is going to be. And it's going to be super wet. Um I, I'm going to probably switch some of my plays uh, to make sure I'm getting guys. I already had Henrik Norlander. I was already picking Connors, Morikawa. Um, you got Lahiri, who had a good showing here recently at uh, the Barbasol. He comes in a ninth in a Hideki, which that's no shock. But now I'll give you a little spin on Hideki. Just like Reed, I'm fading him from my perspective. Um, you can see the last data is from the U.S. Open back in June. And then right, he came down... And, well, we'll just say he tested positive, I think, the day two at the Rocket Mortgage. So he's not pl played a competitive round of golf uh, for, like, I think 28, 29 days. Um, so just side note, that's kind of where I'm going with that. And, you know, but, I mean, typically the guy's pretty solid on hitting fairies. Uh, what I've noticed, if he, he can get that uh, kind of smother hook going, um, that's usually when he gets in troubles. Xander next, no shocker, you got M, but I'm just giving you some guys' names that you wouldn't know that typically hits fairways, because some of these guys, we have no clue, this gun, I'm not going to try to pronounce, we're going to call him Gunchar, um, that's older, that's from the Zozo, 2020, um, but back then, it looks like he was, well, you know what, and then the open doesn't even have, but usually, you know, some of those uh, fairways gained is an old stat that typically you can get. But Zayden Hoot, uh, that should be more recent answer, which, you know, comes to my mind when you're thinking of guys, of course, Hovland. That's interesting that he's this far down. I want to take a look at this. This is not including, um, of course, the BMW International that he won over in Germany. Um, I, it was one term. I think it was a memorial. Maybe I just caught him on Saturday where he was missed the most fairways I've ever seen. Or maybe it was this, the PGA it was kind of shocking on how many fairways, uh, typically he is a fairway getter. So I feel very comfortable. You know, I've already picked him. Uh, I'm going to stick with that. You got Shane Lowry, Paul Casey, typically hits a lot of fairways. Cam Smith's a little interesting. Typically, like Leishman, he can get pretty wayward. Pretty up-to-date information. Uh, but yeah, you can see kind of off and on at the open. Uh, had a pretty good streak here of hitting fairways. So like I said, I've already picked Cam Smith. I'll probably stick with that. Uh, Antoine Rosner, uh, if you're not familiar with him, just kind of going through the guys. You're at uh, like 34. You know, McElroy, of course, he has been struggling to hit fairways. Even when he won at Quell Hollow, um, you know, it wasn't because he was hitting fairways. It was just his scrambling ability was amazing. Okay, let's go see if we can just – I just want to real quickly, I'll put this against Quail Hollow. Okay, so if we want to look at fairways gained against Quail Hollow. Um, I thought that, you know, it would be kind of interesting. I was just checking that this is pulling up. The most recent Wells Fargo, there was a couple different options. Um, and so funny enough, I was a little confused because Morikawa, I thought, played, but he has never played the Wells Fargo. Um, or it looks like, except maybe the PGA Championship, but I don't think he, of course, he wouldn't have played that here. I think that was too long ago. Neither here or there. Um, here's the guys that have, that have played, you know, at least a couple rounds uh, at Quell, the guys that hit the fairway is good. And then also I'll show you my rank. Um, so it just gives you a little, you know, we'll say a comp course kind of comparison. But from fairways gain, this would have been the recent uh, tournament here uh, for the Wells Fargo. You know, funny enough, you got Sabatini that's popping up there. You got Abraham Answer, M, Casey, Norin, Fleetwood, Vegas, Lahiri again. C.T. Pan, Hendrick Norlander, Lowry, Connors, Victor, Hughes. Just give you, you know, you guys can check this out. And then after this, all these other guys have never played there. Um, but just gives you some idea. And then if, if you want to look at the rank for against Quell Hollow, um, you got Paul Casey, you know, of course, Rory. That's no shocker. Uh, Johnny Vegas, Vic Reed, Answer, Neiman. And some of these guys only have four rounds. Uh, but, you know, some of these guys have up to 12. 
So that's also going to kind of skew it a little bit. I mean, if you had a good four rounds, you're going to be up there. If you had a bad four rounds, you're not. Okay. That's enough for the model. I just wanted to, like I said, give you guys from Fairways Gained uh, some ideas if, if you're going to lean that way like I am. All right, let's jump over to ownership. So ownership projections. I actually found a little better way to show this to you guys. Uh, you learn something new every day. And so I found out if I just click on this guy, you can actually uh, go by, you know, least ownership or, you know, most ownership. And I'm like, let's just go with the most. So, of course, what you're looking at here again, Fantasy National. This is everybody that's picked favorites and generated lineups and input them, well, at least generated lineups. Um, and then this gives you the ownership calculations. Typically, as I always state, it could be 1% to 2% up or down. Um, your number one guy right now is Mito Piera, uh, believe it or not, at 26%. And I think a lot of this is just trying to find – it's so tough because a lot of these guys you're not going to know. Um, and the guys that you do know you know, are pretty expensive. And so then finding guys that you know that are decent value – um, you know, this is why these guys are so high in ownership is Mito Piera, Norlander that I was on, Johnny Vegas. You got Victor Hovland coming at fourth. You got Corey Connors. So funny enough, a lot of guys that are good off the tee, Morikawa, Casey. I mean, you can kind of go down. This is just, you know, ranking most highest ownership down. Um, yeah, it's in, that's why I wasn't sure if I was going to do an ownership projection because such a small field and then everybody's going to, be picking the guys they know. I mean, of course, if you're putting in 150 lineups or even 100 lineups, you can definitely take some long shots. And it's going to take, you know, whoever's got that long shot that ends up in third or fourth, you know, you know, gets the bronze, some dude we never heard of that we don't know. That's that's your winner in the big game. Um, give you some ideas of the least zone guys. You know, Gavin Green, um, actually, one time on the European Tour was a pretty, pretty good player. Um, it, I looked at his... Recent stats, and it hasn't been a good showing, but, you know, I think about a year ago, a um, year or two ago, man, the guy was on Infoego. So, I mean, that could, maybe he could find form. Uh, Jorge Campillo, I believe he actually took the spot of, uh, maybe it was Rom. Um, just going from the bottom up to give you, you know, Perator, pretty solid, Valamaki. Uh, da, da, da. Another European tourist, Samuja, Kiefer out of Germany, Rasmus Hogard, pretty solid over on the European tour. Jazz, Jazz Janey, um, you know, I kind of like him. I think uh, I used him, as you see, uh, as one of my like lower plays. Um, you know, it's funny. You can see Reed, everybody's. So that'd be funny. Reed comes out wins this thing. Um, you know, would be a bad to build some lineups. Plug it in Reed um, because you can see his ownership is down. So that would be one thing. Sabatini, uh, Arnas. I'm not just trying to read names here. I'm just going through my mind. Fleetwood at 8%. You know, that could be an interesting play. Leishman, Bezadenhut. I mean, to get away from the 20%, um, you know, you could look at, you know, Av Avman Ortiz. You can see Bezadenhut, great putter, typically keeps it in the fairway. Uh, could be a real rough on approach. Sanjay M at 13. All right. So that just gives you some idea on ownership. And you probably already under, probably had a pretty good idea that, um, you know, the guys that we know are going to be highly owned. But I doubt you ever would have thought that Mito Pierre is going to be the highest owned um, or Norlander second or, you know, Vegas and then Hovland and Connor. So that is pretty interesting there. Um, but it, it's all because, you know, pricing so high. Um, and, and yeah, I think that pricing came out after, you know, Rom and DeShambo, I wish they would have stayed a little longer and would have softened up our pricing a bit like it did to the betting market. So, okay. Um, that's ownership. Let's go jump over to weather. And if you are going to be checking weather and playing showdown or whatever, this is what you're going to want to pull up. Here's the closest place I could find to the course, this Satyama, um, plug that into wind finder and you'll be good to go. And so this is, should be showing you yeah, local time for them. And so they are starting for us. It'll be around 6.30 a.m. Eastern. So I would guess we want to look over here on Thursday. And it looks like pretty calm. It looks like the rain's going to start in the afternoon and the winds are going to pick up. So, you know, that could be another idea is a morning 
uh, you know, an AM versus a PM flight build. Um, because I know, yeah, so you can see it's going to be Friday is going to be a wet mess. Um, and it's hot and humid over there. So maybe that'll cool it down a little bit, but you know, nothing can really concern about the wind. Saturday is going to dry out, get a little windy in the afternoon or windy er, and then you got Sunday where it looks like if it, you know, there's going to be wind, it's going to be that day and then rain in the afternoon. So that's the forecast right now. Again, I always show this just to save you guys the time of trying to figure out where you want to pull from WindFinder. Uh, this is the one that I could find that was closest to the course. So, okay. Uh, I think that's it. I think that's all I have for you guys. And uh, let's go wrap this up. Okay, so that's it. And, uh, you know, I'm curious, you know, if you guys want, let me know in the YouTube comments how many people is going to be watching a lot of this. Uh, I'm going to be into it. You know, it's at, it's at nighttime. We don't have any other golf to watch. So, of course, I've got money on it. So, yeah, I'm, I'm definitely going to have eyeballs on it. I'm just curious uh, how much of you guys, are, you know, are interested in this or just the Olympics, period. Um, so, yeah, if you could. Click the like button, share this with anybody that uh, you, you might know that uh, could use it. Subscribe if you are new and you have not subscribed, please do so. I have three shows a week. Going to be covering all the tournaments and, of course, FedEx. And actually, I'm going to be doing a giveaway on my one-year anniversary of actually doing this. The first show I've ever done was at the Northern Trust last year. Um, it's kind of funny. I went back and looked through it, and I've come a long way, at least in how I'm providing content to you guys. And the show should just keep getting better and better. So, subscribe and uh, if i can help you with anything uh, hit me up on youtube comments or feel free to follow me on twitter at dfs golf guru all the best of luck to us let's go out and make some money and uh, i will talk to you guys next monday when we'll i believe we're talking about the wgc st jude in memphis so all right guys have a great weekend take care <laughs>